In this video, we will be discussing standardized approaches to the phone referral, including ISBAR, PEAKED, and the five C's approach. For each one, we'll cover what the acronym actually stands for, including examples. We'll do a brief rundown on the background and the evidence base, and I'll give you my personal thoughts on the pros and cons of each as someone who's tried using all of these systems. I think this video will be most valuable to you if you are a healthcare worker who regularly has to pick up the phone and refer patients to other clinicians for admission or consultation. In case you're new here, my name's Hayden Richards. I am an emergency physician and this is Comms Lab. On this channel, I share my journey and what I've learned as I strive to develop myself into an effective communicator and an emotionally intelligent leader. In Australia, phone referral is the name we use for that process of calling another clinician about a patient we've seen and seeking something from that clinician, usually like an admission or a clinical review. Other names for this process in other parts of the world include admission handoff or consult request, or basically there's a bunch of different names, but I'm gonna use the word phone referral. And you know, I still find this one of the most challenging parts of my job. I think it's something to do with the fact that whenever you're making one of these calls, you're interrupting someone who's probably already super busy and you're asking them to do something for you. They're often not that happy to hear from you. Sometimes they're just like still half asleep if you're calling them in the middle of the night. And even though it's kind of their job and it's kind of your job to be calling them, it can still be really hard. Anyway, one of the things which people have tried to do to make this process more structured and a little easier on ourselves and on the people who we're calling is developing standardized approaches. There's actually a bunch of them, but today we're gonna to be examining three. And the first one is ISBAR. ISBAR is actually an approach that was originally developed by the military to facilitate efficient communication between nuclear submarine captains. Mayday, mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you okay, over? We are thinking, we are thinking. What are you thinking about? It was adopted into healthcare as a handover tool and its use has subsequently been extended for standardized approaches to referrals. I stands for identify. Hi, this is Hayden Richards, one of the emergency physicians. Is that the cardiology registrar? S stands for situation. I've got a 74 year old woman in recess with what looks like an evolving STEMI. B stands for background. They've had chest pain for two hours, which is ongoing despite GTN and morphine from the paramedics. A is for assessment. The ECG shows ST elevation in the anterior and lateral leads with reciprocal change inferiorly. Their vitals are currently stable. And R is for recommendation or request. I think they need to go to the cath lab urgently. We're initiating a STEMI call now. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of ISBAR. For me, probably the main pro for ISBAR is that of all the tools we'll discuss today, ISBAR has been around for the longest and it's well established in the academic literature as a handover tool that improves the completeness and the, and the fidelity of information transfer. What about the cons? Well, in my opinion, it has two main disadvantages. Firstly, I personally find some of the words a little bit non-specific. For example, the word situation. It just isn't very specific in terms of the kind of information that I should be sharing at this stage. Secondly, R for request is at the end of the approach, at the end of the structured tool. This is a problem because most well, probably the most consistent recommendation to come out of the referral communication literature is that the clinical request or the, the, the relevant question should be put right at the front of the conversation. So for an example of a structured approach that actually does this, let's take a look at PEAKED. PEAKED is an approach that was developed specifically for emergency department doctors. It came out of some rigorous qualitative studies by Dr. Teresa Chan, where she interviewed 60 doctors across both emergency and inpatient specialties in an effort to understand what were the most important components and what's the best order to sequence them in. This is what they came up with. P is for preparation. The key elements of preparation are probably firstly establishing very clearly why the patient needs referral. And secondly, having all the details of the patient's history, examination findings and investigation results um, available to you while you're actually making the referral in case you need to reference them. I is for identification. Hi, this is Hayden Richards, one of the emergency physicians. Can I just check I'm speaking to the surgical registrar? Great. Q is for question. I've got a patient I'd like to refer to you for admission with what looks like an evolving small bowel obstruction. Have you got a moment to hear the details? U is for urgency. The patient is currently stable, but we do have some significant bed pressures 
in the emergency department at the moment. So I'd be keen to get them up to the ward on interim orders if possible. E is for educational modifications. This component prompts you to take into account the educational level of yourself and also the person you're speaking to so that you can both modify your language and your expectations accordingly. D is for discuss. This element prompts you to anticipate some sort of dialogue after you've given the referral information. So what are the pros and cons? Well, the first important pro is that this is purpose built for emergency medicine and it is evidence-based. In other words, it was developed by emergency doctors, specifically for emergency doctors who have to make these referrals. And in determining the relevant content and sequencing, they took into account the needs of the people on both ends of the phone. In particular, I really like the fact that the question is upfront. This provides the lens through which the recipient of the referral can then view the information of the whole case. For example, the question might be, I'm calling because I'd like to get your advice on a patient's rash and whether you think I should change their antibiotics. Or, I'm calling because I think we need your help intubating a patient with a difficult airway. Or, hey, I've got an admission for you. Are you able to take some details? Whatever the question is, it then frames the rest of the information that you have to give to the referral recipient in such a way that it relates back to the particular action or the decision that you'd like their help with. I also like the fact that this model prompts you to actually prepare for the referral. It prompts you to take into account the educational level of both the people involved in the referral. And it also prompts you to anticipate some sort of discussion or dialogue at the end of the referral. This last point is actually really important because it's otherwise pretty easy to be blindsided or thrown if the recipient of the referral hits back at you with a bunch of questions when you've finished delivering the clinical information. If you're anticipating at least some dialogue, you're more likely to see those questions as an effort to work through the problem jointly rather than as some kind of attack or, or pushback. What about the cons? Well, the only significant con that I can see here is that it doesn't provide any guidance on how to structure the clinical information. Although, in a sense, this is something that most doctors have been doing since first or second year of medical school. So perhaps it's, it's less important anyway. The third model we're going to look at is the five C's approach. The five C's model was developed by Chad Kessler and his emergency colleagues in the United States. Like the developers of Peaked, Dr. Kessler and his colleagues also engaged in rigorous qualitative study, but they then chose to map their approach onto an existing model from the business world. The five C's stand for contact, communicate, core question, collaborate, and close the loop. As you can see, the elements of this model are a little broader than those of Peaked. In practice, the 5Cs approach is actually designed to be used as a checklist with each component comprising two to four additional sub-components. Okay, let's talk about pros and cons. So in terms of the pros, the 5Cs approach is the only approach that's actually been quantitatively evaluated with a randomized controlled trial to establish its, its, its validity as an evaluation tool for referrals. What about the cons? Well, one con is that the participants in this study were actually medical students rather than experienced clinicians or even sort of junior doctors, which I think could possibly impact its relevance uh, to it being used in emergency departments by doctors. But for me, the main downside to the 5Cs approach is that you actually do need to use the checklist, I think. You, you need to have it in front of you while you're using it. And because each item starts with a C, I think I would actually find it quite hard to remember each of them and remember what order they're supposed to go in. Another problem is that, as you can see, there are actually 12 items on the checklist. So in a sense, it's, it's not as simple as advertised. Okay, so which one is the winner? Well, as you can see, there are genuine pros and cons to each of these approaches, so I suspect it may come down to personal preference. For me personally, I find the Peaked tool most helpful. It's short enough for me to remember its components and specific enough to provide genuine, concrete support to me while I'm actually on the phone. Also, it sequences its components according to the best available evidence. Now, confession time. Do I actually use a structured tool in my referrals day to day? If I'm being completely honest, most of the time, no. I've done this so many times now that the process is fairly automatic, but I do try to think about how I'm structuring it. I just don't use a specific structured tool to do it. One way I could use a tool like Peaked, for example, is, is as a kind of reflective practice if a referral goes badly. I can work through the elements and try to work out whether I missed a step or if I did something out of sequence. 
But if I think back to my time as a junior doctor, I think I would have found something like Peaked really useful. Thanks for watching guys. In the next video, we will be discussing the importance of preparing for referrals and the factors that you need to consider to really set yourself up for success. Thanks for watching and I will see you there.